Helena Mitt, and most of you know Helena, I'm sure. She is our library director in town. Um, but she's here today to talk about electronic readers. And I have to tell you my first experience with an electronic reader. My best friend's daughter Facebooks me, and I see a message, thank you, Mom, for my colored nook. So the first thing I did was call my girlfriend and said, when did you have time to paint your kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what's enough? So I'm here to learn from Helena, and, and this will be a great experience for all of us. And again, thank you all for coming. Helena Minnis. Well, thank you, Mary, for inviting me. Uh, it's nice to come here and see everybody. Thank you, Rob Norcam, for the other people in the town could find some, get something of interest out of this talk. It's going to be very informal. Please ask questions or have comments. Um, I know some of you have e-readers. How many of you do? I've talked to two people, Jackie and Ron. And you've got three people. You've got one too. Uh, what was that? You've got an e-reader? No, I don't oh, have one. Okay. That's why I came. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so those of you who had, you, you want to uh, add anything, so, uh, Jackie and Rob, about what your, your experience with the e-reader is. Um, I wanted to just start off by saying this is still how I go to work every day and I go home every day with an enormous bag of good old-fashioned books and uh, all kinds of library books and books from book sale and uh, so uh, you know I think people often say do I have to stop reading traditional books do I have to get rid of books but I mean maybe eventually but now I don't see why you can't have both and coexist and use e-reader for one occasion and keep your regular books, your traditional books for um, other times. I do have three e-readers here that the library owns. They're not quite ready to circulate, but they will be. Um, Kindle, and I'll let you look at these afterwards, the black and white nook and the, the color nook. And um, as I said to Mary, the minute you put anything down on paper, it's out of date. Um, there's now a brand new black and white nook that I think is probably very similar to the Kindle. And I'll get into a little more detail about these in a minute. Um, but uh, you will be able to take them out and, and, and afterwards if, if you want to look at them. I'm just going to go through this PowerPoint fairly quickly as I say if, if you have any questions. So, you know, who uses e-readers? Um, really just about anybody. I think a lot of commuters read them, use them. Um, travelers, a uh, cousin of mine went to Europe last year backpacking and he brought his Kindle and um, he didn't have to bring a whole, you know, several backpacks of books or it used to be the old way to go to Europe was with the steamer trunk. and. Yes. Uh, all your book. My sister-in-law said something interesting. She has a Kindle now, and she said she reads more books than she would if she had been for a while. I mean, that, I said, why? Well, she doesn't really know, but she thinks it's because she's got it. She takes it in her purse wherever she goes, and she can read. And um, she's also willing to spend the money to buy the books. And, uh, you have to be able to do that. Now, this was my issue at first. I have trouble reading on a computer for any length of time. I don't know how you find that. It feels wavy and I get kind of seasick. I, I, I did actually read a whole book on the Kindle and I found it's not at all like reading on a computer. It's really very steady. It's easy to hold in your hand. You can change the font. You can make the font bigger um, and you can change the type of font with just a you know, very quick pressing of a button. And do you find that, Jackie, that it's easy to read? Like Oh, very easy. Much easier than a computer. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's in here. And I have 25 books with me right now. Oh. When you couldn't do that with a regular book. Right. Yeah. So you can rotate the screen, like when I'm on the treadmill. Yeah. I rotate it. So oh, on the screen, on the treadmill? Um, now, yeah, the, the question does come up. It's expensive. Even though the cost of the e-reader device itself is coming down. Um, you like can, what price is it? Well, now you can get the Kindle for $139, and I've even seen it on Amazon for $114. Mm -hmm. 
I don't quite get what that is. It's special things. Um, and twenty fourteen, it's Staples also. The, the one that that one has the ads, yeah. I guess. When oh, you download a book, you'll get like an uh, ad via the internet. So it's you, worth it to get spend the extra twenty bucks. It really is. Um, and uh, the black and white Nook is one hundred and thirty nine. Um, but then you've got the expense of continuing to buy books. There's a lot of free books that you can download from the internet. But I think most people are interested in the new books. Um, what there is now through the library, through Merrimack Valley Library Consortium, is OverDrive. And if you have a library card, you can download books to your device. I'm just quickly going to show you what OverDrive looks like. I'm not going to try to explain how to use it. This is called this one, from a company called OverDrive. It's right on the front of our website. Um, just lets you download audio and ebooks for free. And on there, right now you cannot download onto the Kindle, but it's coming. And that is a huge advance. The Kindle resisted and resisted, and they finally said, OK. And that's wonderful. So this overdrive is going to just keep expanding. Um, there's a way to search. You can limit it to what's available. The thing is, it is a library product. And you know one of the key things about libraries is there's usually a waiting list. So you might, when you really want that bestseller, you're probably still going to have to wait the way you do for a regular book. Um, but it's worth exploring. And it also, of course, it's not just the Kindle and the Nook. You've got your phone, your iPhone, Android, Blackberry now, and then the iPad. It's, it's um, the list of devices that are compatible is very long and it makes you dizzy. There's so much information. If I want to buy an e-reader, um, a year or two ago there were really quite a few more choices. I mean, they're still out there. There's the Sony reader. There's something called Literati. Uh, there was the Borders put out one that just never went anywhere. It's really come down to the Kindle or the Nook, then the iPad or another tablet. And there's quite a few now competitors for iPad. Um, and I have heard and read that maybe the e-reader e may be a limited phase, and that pretty much people who want e-reader will be getting tablets at some point, rather than because the tablets do a lot more. Um, and they all have wireless that lets you, you know, get, buy your books sort of wherever you can access wireless. Which one do you think you would recommend? Well, you know what? I'm not going to get into recommending directly because it's you know, it's a free market and uh, that's not mine. Um, I will say so far I have read one whole book on the Kindle and I really like the Kindle. It's very elegant. I have not seen the new black and white nook. I would probably be more apt if, when I buy one, which I will at some point. My son lives in China and I do plan to visit him and I, that would be the perfect time to have a e-reader. Um, the Kindle is it's really just the book. It's very easy to use, and um, it's very. Now that's what your wife has, right? Yeah. yeah. Jack, you got the thing. I can't even use it. She's always reading. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's cool. The pages, it almost doesn't look real. You know what I mean when you look at because it's like you like you look at a computer screen, but it doesn't look like a computer screen at all. It's very flat. There's no glare. It's cool. It's easy on the eyes and everything. So. Yeah. It's very, very easy. Um. And then, this, Eleanor, this kind of gets back to your question, what are the differences? And Kindle only has black and white. The Nook um, is a great, the color one is a great one for children. Um, my sister-in-law, who has the Kindle, is going to get a Nook for her granddaughter for her birthday. She's going to be seven. And then the whole family can use it. I have the opinion, though, that these are one-person devices. I mean, I know families have them. You don't but, want to give it up. Well, do you remember the <laughs> personal computer? They set it up so you could have a login for mom and dad. But everybody wanted that computer at the same time, and I think it's sort of the same thing with an e-reader. It's, it's hard to share, <laughs> um, unless you, you know, they lose interest at some point. So um, I can see them have families having several. Um, but as I said, I will be certainly try them out. And, uh, <coughs> 
and more difference is the iPad um, and other tablets that have games. People have shown me their beautiful photographs from Europe on them. Um, business memos. They well, we know in town who who have the selectmen all have the iPads now, and the town administrator, and that's how they're do, storing all their information and getting ready for their meetings. And uh, it's really quite, there was an article about it in Globe North about the use of technology in, in government. So it's the iPad plays an important role. And then, uh, how many of you have iPhones or Droids or smartphones? Do. <laughs> you do? And I have the book application, I have the book app on my phone. And I can read them, but I have to enlarge it <laughs> because I can't quite see it. But I have to tell you, I was really impressed with Jack's Kindle. That was, I thought that was an awesome thing. So when would you read on a phone? I mean, in the way they work is you can have the same book and you can t go from your Kindle to your phone to your, and it's all the right. same page. Like when you're waiting somewhere? Yeah, you get nothing to do, you're in a waiting room. You know what's kind of crazy? You can turn the speakerphone on the iPhone, change the app by hitting the little button in the center, and go back to reading your book while you're talking to someone on the phone. Yeah, you can. It's just kind of crazy. Oh, it's like call waiting for you. Oh, no, you can still have it live. You can still talk to them. Like, oh, you know, you can sit there just like this, like, oh, hey, Ma, you know, I'm doing great. Yeah, yeah. While you're maybe looking up a recipe or something. Yeah, with the droid. I'm one thing at a time person. Yeah. Yeah. The more features they have, the more intimidated I am. It definitely encourages multitasking. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a little too much. I just have the old, regular old cell phone on the old one. Um, so, well, now, you know, the question came up about just old-fashioned books. Is there anybody here who is sort of hesitant to try to make the switch to the e-reader? Willing to give it a try and sure. maybe check it out from the library. Yeah, you lose your book And you know, when, once you can download books from the OverDrive, especially on the Kindle from the library, you should. But that that has to the OverDrive has to expand its collection so that people don't have to wait too long to get their titles. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing about OverDrive is you do have to download it a software to get it, help you get it on your e-reader. So they, they need to work on that to make it easier. Because I think with the phone, it goes directly to your phone and the iPad. You don't have to go through that so. um, procedure. And um, so if people would like to look at the e-readers, um, you can pass them around or um, I was going to talk for just a minute about <coughs> this is the Kindle, and it, it turns the pages. This when you go to use them. They all go to sleep, so when you go to use it, it's going to start. Just click the. Yeah. Um, this is loaded with quite a few titles, not 25, but it's got the county, Andre de Busey's book and the fifth witness, which my husband and I were reading that at the same time. He was reading it on a regular book. I found reading on the Kindle a little slower. I tend to read too fast. So maybe that was good for me. And um, more than one person has said, and I found myself doing it, you're apt to change the page too quickly. You know, you need to wait a little bit longer because suddenly the page is. What I like is when I would pick it up again after having put it down. It was right where I left it. And, uh, it's, it's very when you turn it off and turn it back on, it's right where you left it? Yeah. yeah. For that, it for the book. It goes to sleep. Yeah, it goes to sleep. Um, and it uses something called a toggle. It, you know, they all have slightly different um, systems of operating. And they have a little key, it has a keyboard. And, um, I, I think the Kindle's probably the easiest to use. 